Greetings all, Devious Monkey here. Today, we're gonna to talk about gimbals. I first saw, I guess it was almost an ad that was made in to a little movie for, and I don't remember what gimbal it was, but it was it was crazy expensive and, and really cool. And I remember them showing footage first without showing you that they were using a gimbal. And basically it was this amazing shot where it was coming down the street, the camera was coming down the street, followed this woman who got into a taxi and then followed along with the taxi, but shooting from outside the window in. And then they showed how they got it. And basically this kid had this camera system on this gimbal and he was rollerblading while he was holding this thing down the street and caught up to the cab and then grabbed onto it and held outside the cab through the window to film all that stuff. And it was like perfectly smooth footage because of this gimbal. So this is the start of the gimbal craze. Like you can get this amazing footage, but it was stupid expensive. And, and for Joe Schmo like me, even though I really, really wanted it or something like it, I couldn't afford anything like that. And at the time, I mean, you think my videos suck now. You should have seen when I first started a long time ago. They were horrible, probably because I didn't have a gimbal. <laughs> Fast forward now, and gimbals were, were starting to show up all over the place. And they still weren't that cheap, but they weren't that good either. But you gotta start somewhere. So I started off with my very first Fayotech. And this gimbal was for my GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black Surf Edition. And back then, GoPros didn't have stabilization. That wasn't anything that was even in play at the time. They were really awful and, and you could have this tinky ass little camera and, and your footage was horrible if you weren't really careful. You had to stick it in, in here and screw the little plate over it to hold it in place and all that kind of stuff. And you know, there were a series of a thousand different button pushes that you had to remember to get it into the mode that you wanted it to be in. In battery life, you know, like this thing, you crank this apart and it came with, with a tiny ass little battery, but I ended up getting like an extension for it so that I could put more batteries on there. And they were those dinky ass little, little batteries and they were horrible. The battery life wasn't very good. The gimbals weren't very good. And there you go. So that was my first one that I got. Then as gimbals started to become more prevalent, they were still too expensive and they were huge and, and just crazy. So I moved to my next one, which was a Viewflex gimbal which was also for a GoPro. And at the time I got it for, I think I had a GoPro Hero 6. The Hero 6 was actually, at that point they started putting stuff into it to, to help stabilize it a little bit, but it wasn't the greatest. That was actually a really decent gimbal. It had a lot of different modes in it. It was much better. The battery life was a lot better and it was really cool. I ended up giving that along with the GoPro and all the other stuff that it was associated with it to a friend of mine. He trains dogs and I was watching some of his videos and I thought, you know, this would be pretty cool and mine's just sitting here. So I just put a package together and I sent it to him. At this point now, we're talking GoPro 7, 8, 9. You don't need a gimbal for any of those action cams because the stabilization software that's in them is better than any gimbal at this point. The next one that I got here is my Moza Mini S. And I got this specifically for cell phone. I was using it with, I believe, iPhone 8 Plus. Even then, phones started to also have really amazing stabilization and all that kind of stuff, but I thought it was really cool to have a gimbal and I thought I was gonna use it and everything. I've used it a couple of times walking around the house and, and I didn't use it again. So it's been sitting in, in a drawer with all the rest of the gimbals that I don't use. Okay, then gimbals started to become a lot more accessible to your average Joe and everybody started getting gimbals and all the footage was done on gimbals and everything. And it almost got to a point of, of insanity that it started to be looked down upon that every, everybody had a gimbal and all the footage was super smooth and it took away from the realism of having a handheld shot and everything. And, and people started criticizing all the gimbal footage and gimbals in general and all that kind of stuff whatever. So I ended up buying my, my Zoom Tech Crane Plus. This is a, a really good gimbal and it makes for incredibly smooth footage and it can take a really big camera. At the time I was using this with my Sony a7 III, but you can see how all this shit is just swinging around and all that kind of stuff. It's very difficult to balance your camera on this thing. And this was before they started having locking planes 
and the ability to make it very easy then to balance your camera. And also, if you didn't have your camera on here, they also now start making it so that you can lock everything into place and it doesn't move. And that way you don't have this big floppy flying mess of shit flying around when you're trying to shove it into a bag and all that stuff. Then we move up to the last gimbal that I've ever bought so far, and I don't think I'll ever be buying another one. We've got my Crane M2. Now this has been my workhorse. And if you've been following me at all, you know, I've done a ton of videos with this because I bought this to work with my Sony a6600. Driving home from one of my routes on, on my normal day job, I remember I was coming back from the DC area and I had to come through the tunnels, which meant I was going to be sitting in traffic with my thumb up my butt for two hours, hating that I have to do this all the time. But while I was sitting there, I was thinking to myself, you know, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a Sony a6600 because it's got stabilization and it's small and it's relatively inexpensive in the grand scheme of things of the kind of money I spend on stuff and blah, 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 blah. And I thought, you know what? I bet you I could, I could get a gimbal for it you know, but a smaller gimbal. I wouldn't have to use this big ass one. Probably the, that, that Crane M2 looks like it might do it. Although it might be a little bit heavy, but I'll have to figure that out. So I started researching it as soon as I got home and found that I thought that I could make it work. And I did. Now it depends on what lenses you use, but the Crane M2 is, is actually a very easy gimbal. It's very small. I mean, it's no bigger than any of the other grips that I use and even smaller than some of them. It has all the locking planes so that you can do one plane at a time to balance it. And once you do it a couple of times, you actually don't even have to worry about locking it. You pretty much know where to put it if you're doing it with the same camera. And in my case, I was doing it with my a6600. Now I also bought that little plate, that small rig plate that goes in there so that you could use you know my peak design standard plate and i could slide it on there and it actually has little markings on it if you so desire that you could measure it and remember where it is set if you switched it around and all that kind of stuff but i never did that basically i just i know how to balance this thing i can get this thing balanced in under a minute now with either the a6600 or sometimes even the sony zv1 if i was going to use this it would be with the a6600 and again i can balance it in under a minute it is a great gimbal, my favorite gimbal of all the ones that I've ever, ever had. And it's very easy, very light, works great. It's very intuitive. So again, like once you use it a couple of times, you're gonna know which mode you need to be in. You're gonna know how to switch things around and to do all that kind of stuff. And it actually is really spectacular. And it, was a, it wasn't that expensive either, which was another thing. As long as you can measure it out and set it correctly, it can handle more than you think it can. In fact, I have measured all that out. Go back and look at all my videos. You can see that I put actual measurements, weights, and, and talked about all the different lenses that I've used with it and all that kind of stuff. And I've even measured out stuff that I don't have because people ask me about it. If you just go to B&H Photo, you can see all the measurements and all the, all the weights that they give on the lenses and the cameras and this, that's, and the other things. And I actually took a, a scale and I measured out all of the components individually and then together and then tested it out. Now, the nice thing is that you can change the motor strength and I don't even think I have the motor strength on high and it was able to handle like my heaviest configuration and I never had a problem. It, it never went crazy, it, it never failed, it always worked perfectly. And the battery life is pretty amazing too. All right, I don't want to turn this into a Crane M2 commercial, but basically that's all the gimbals that, that I have had or still have. The only one that I don't have is that, that Viewflex one that I gave to my buddy with the, with the GoPro. Otherwise, I have them all. Now, going forward, there's so many gimbals out there that it's, it's kind of ridiculous. You, you can definitely, if you do your homework, you can find one that's going to work with whatever camera system that you have. And that's all I've got for you today. So, as always, thanks for joining me. Like, subscribe, and all that shit. And remember, kids forward and up.